So what are you doing? What horses have you got? What's happening and where are you at with the competing at the We've moment? We've got quite a good team this year. Um, last year was kind of basing around bringing in some young horses and, and kind of staying away from competitions and just kind of building um, a string of horses up. Mm -hmm. Whereas this year now, those horses are a little bit older, much stronger, and they're kind of ready to go out. And we've already started um, back in January, so a couple of months down the line, they've been out, they've competed. We've had regional championships, which went really well. One horse winning one class. Excellent. Um, third, uh, three times coming second. So regionals went really well. They're all qualified for the nationals in five classes. So that was a good start. Brilliant. And two went off and did their first pre St. George uh, last week and came second and fifth. So, you know, still green doing their first pre St. George, mm -hmm. but so much to take from that. And then obviously this season, all the Premier League start. Uh, I would imagine in the next month or so. So brilliant. Our plan is at some point to head towards Premier League. So, how many horses have you got on the out competing now? How many have you got? I've got a show next week, and we've got uh, a truck of five going down, and Excellent. they're from advanced, medium, upwards. So okay. nice. It's because it's, it's been a long time since I've been able to put the top. As I say, it would be nice to see you back out on the stage. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Really the top hat here. doesn't fit, so I've got to get a new one. Um, <laughs> burst a button on my jacket. Excellent. Got to get a new jacket. Is this food related or food related? No, 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 no. I don't think so. <laughs> I think it's just called. <laughs> Get hitting 30 this year, so maybe that's what it, what it is. So old, let's mm. not go there. Um, now, just touching on the fitness side of things, you're doing some stuff for charity, aren't you? And you've been yeah. running. Now, tell us a little bit about that. I'm doing it for Spinal Research, who are a charity that I've been working with for the last three years. Mm -hmm. And um, I was approached and asked, would I be interested in doing the marathon for a, a different charity? And I thought, you know, better that I do a charity that I'm working with sure. and, and really strongly believe in. And um, so, yeah, that's. I've been kind of running for about two months now. How's it going? Um, it's it's a lot harder than I thought, and I probably won't ever run again <laughs> after the marathon. Um, I've gone through shin splints, um, pains in knees, lower back problems, um, foot sores, and I haven't even got anywhere near half the distance that I've got to run. Really? So um, I do find it difficult, and I find it really difficult fitting all the training in because I'm. I work seven days a week teaching. The yard's busy too. Um, so it's not uh, it's not something that's coming naturally. But um, I'm up to doing. I've got a marathon in a week and a half, mm -hmm. which is a half marathon. Um, and I'm quite confident about doing that. So if I think a lot of this thing, it's all up here. Yeah, psychological. Psychologically, I'm freaking out about 26 miles. <laughs> So if I run 13 and I survive all that, then I'm thinking, okay, then... Oh, well, I've got to do that twice. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, now, can people sponsor? Can they help? Yeah. You? How do they do that? Or do you um, need to put the information on the If screen? you go on my website, mm -hmm. um, which is andrewgould.com, there's a link through Brilliant. onto that. Okay. So back to the horses. Obviously, you've really come into the spotlight this year with your association with, with Katie. Yeah. Um, what's happening with her? Have you, are all her horses here? Is she training? Are we going to see her? Uh, she's got two horses at the moment, um, two really good horses. I've just taken one of them out to a show uh, this week. Um, and it's it's really, you know, there's no pressure on Kate to go out and compete. That's no. not why she has it. And she is a very, very busy woman, so she doesn't have the time that some other people do to be able to put the training in. Mm. So every spare bit of time she has, she's down here riding. But um, I said to her this year, look, if we get to go to competitions and we do all that side of things, and that's great, it's a bonus, but let's not put the pressure on to say you must mm. go out and compete because I think that will ruin it for her. She's enjoying the two horses that she's got. Mm -hmm. She's got no pressure. She can come down, she can ride, be very casual about it. Um, and I think that's what she likes. I think it's really important as well to say that it's just her passion for riding. There's so many, obviously, rumours flying around in the press, but she just loves it, doesn't she? Yes, yeah, she not, does. There is no big aspiration to get to the Olympics on one of these. If you horses. ask her, does she, she want to go to the Olympics, to she'll say yes, like every other but person it, would. But there's a difference between saying, yes, I want to go to the Olympics and a realistic thing. Mm. You know, she's got lots of other targets that she wants to do away from horses sure. so um, she's not going to put the whole heart and soul just into horses mm. like you say it's a hobby for her Absolutely. Um, and she, she really enjoys it and it's a good way for her to get away from everything else yeah and it, she's a great ambassador just to help people get interested in the sport get riding and, and you know everyone can have a go really isn't it I think there's a lot of young girls out there that inspire um, to be a bit like sure. Kate in some way but um, 
I think, yeah, definitely. That she, she's got a lot of big fan base. Yeah, for sure. So moving on, we've read a few things about you wanting to get into the eventing world. Is that happening or are we going to stick with the dressage? No, I did do it last year and I, I have to say I really enjoyed it and I would love to do it again this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I got offered a couple of horses early on, but the reality is with five horses competing now, most of the Premier League shows are going to be clashing. Sure. And, you know, I do need tuition when it comes to eventing, so having the time to go off and get horses fit and learn about cross-country riding, yeah, it's too much. Mm. Um, and the thing is, last year was fun because there was no pressure, and I didn't really care for, well, that's a lot, I did care for one or not, but this year would be different, and I'd really want to do well. Get and, really competitive, yeah. And I don't really, I can't justify having the time to do that. So you're going to stay with the dressage this year? Yeah. Cool. Now, we're sitting in your feed room at the moment, and I know, um, obviously, Bailey's Horse Feed sponsors you. How important is the sponsorship for you? Um, well, Jane, that I work with uh, at Bailey's, has been brilliant to us. She's um, always on the end of the phone. The whole team at Bailey's have been very good from that point of view. And I think it's important to have a company where you can very easily pick up the phone and say, look, I don't really get this. This horse isn't eating this. I don't understand what should I do. Mm-hmm. They're straight down here. And, and that's something I've never had in the past. Yeah. So for me, it's great. And I'm not, I don't pretend to know an awful lot about feed. So I need somebody that can put it into English. Well, that's what I was about to say. Just because you own a horse doesn't mean you're an expert on everything that goes with it. And no, I think the beauty of far from it. The, help, <laughs> yeah, the helplines there and every horse is different. So probably a lot of your horses, you've got an awful lot of feed in here. So I'm assuming they've all got different issues, which you let them sort out for Majority you. of the horses um, we don't really ever have a problem with. You know, right at the beginning when we took on the sponsorship, they came down and they went through every horse and they worked out a balanced diet for those horses. And they, they kind of... A, stayed with that and maybe the odd one we've had to say look can we cut this down a little bit or add this and that sort of thing there's only one horse um which is my best horse that has a problem and his problem is he gets bored of eating the same feed Mm -hmm. and um, he very quickly drops weight and he stops eating and especially when he goes to shows Mm -hmm. so um bailey's team are basically uh always in touch with this one horse and seeing if we can come up with solutions and so far he's um touch wood everything is working regarding the feed department okay mm-hmm. you know he has somebody came down um who used to own him about two weeks ago and said you know god i didn't recognize him as the best he ever looked oh, great. so he has you know for us mm-hmm. sometimes it's difficult because we see him every day yeah and you don't get the feedback no you, yeah. this guy you know who would be a big critic in that way would it was the first to say his muscles up really well he, he looks in really good you know you've done a good job and he good. didn't he doesn't know anything about the horse not eating sure. okay so f- from that point of view then you think yeah okay then we're on the right line Brilliant. but um yeah and the bodies have been very good in that way good now just to go back to training we're going to make some videos with you today we've yeah. already been out and seen you on one of uh, your lovely horse that you've just done the the uh, pre-st george on now just to touch on the training you keep banging on about the basics and i think that's an important message to get out to everyone that's why you guys are successful isn't it it's not because you go out and just practice tricks all day long is it though there is uh, no way that you can underestimate the the basics Mm -hmm. and I think lots of people get excited I know when I first went to David Hunt's yard I was like I can't wait to ride a half pass and a flying change and I'm fed up with having to come back to trot and now this way I can just (laughs) do a flying change when I change the rain yeah you know after a week and two of riding all this school I've done that now and then actually understanding the basics of training a horse was Mm -hmm. so much more important and once you got that you know, training a horse was actually quite easy. Mm. Um, and most horses all have the same sort of problems. You can come at them at different angles, but um, the quality of their their basic way of going is the most important part. I mean, yeah. flying changes, it's a natural thing for them to do. Mm. Um, you lead a horse down to the field, it will passage all the way down there, it's mm. natural. Mm. So as long as you get that horse in the right frame, and the right balance, it's naturally gonna come to him. So mm. once you can get that into your head, but I think a lot of people, like I say to people, you've got to do a lot of transitions with this horse. It's running away with you. And you can see them do sort of like six, seven transitions, right? That Tick that box, done my <laughs> transitions, what's next? Yeah. You know, it's going that extra little bit and really understanding what that transition's just done for you. Well, we're going to see you guys, you and Daniel, Tipson yeah. is here today. So we're going to uh, see the other videos um, that are going to help with the basics and show some of that. But so good luck this year. Thank really you very much. nice to see you out in your top hat and tails. Yeah, this year. good luck with all Not the that horses. it fits, but <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's sorted. Well, once you've got a new one, <laughs> Andrew Gould, thank you very Pleasure. much. Pleasure. Thank, thank you.